Your attention, please. The Disc Geek Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Disc Geek Podcast. This is the podcast that's all about Disney theme parks, but mostly Disneyland. I am your host, Daniel Hale. Well, it's been a few weeks. <laughs> you may have heard that I announced about a month ago that I was no longer going to record the Diz Geek podcast. And uh, I, I announced this for a few reasons. Well, first of all, uh, when I say I was no longer going to record the Diz Geek podcast, I just mean temporarily. Like, I'm not recording. There's going to be kind of a, a long hiatus. And uh, I announced that for a few reasons. Uh, one... Uh, well, it was COVID-19. Um, it was, and it's still a thing. And with all of the parks closed, I didn't feel like there would be a lot to talk about. Um, I just didn't want to have a show and say, well, the parks are still closed and just try to come up with, you know, filler content. Um, this show is about Disneyland and Walt Disney World and Disney stuff and what's currently going on. And... I like to focus 100% on the parks. You know, I don't cover Disney Plus and the business side of things and the movies and Marvel. And, you know, there's other podcasts that do that. And I'll let them do that. I just, I want to stick to the parks. So with the parks being closed, it's like, okay, well, what can we talk about? I suppose I could come up with, you know, the history of It's a Small World or something, you know, but frankly and honestly, it's like there's other podcasts that do that. And they do it way better than I could. <laughs> I mean, that's just the truth. There's, there, that, that, that niche is filled. And I think it's filled well. And I just, why show up and, you know, stomp on what they do? Because they, 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 you know, you know who I'm talking about and they do it way better. Uh, but there's, there's a second reason. And the second reason's uh, twofold. Uh, one, I was moving just down the street, but still moving. We bought a new house. I'm in it now. Have a new studio set up. Holy awesome. And uh, twofold, one moving to my kids are, are home. My wife is home. And it's I spend pretty much the entire day trying to keep my kids, you know, somewhat homeschooled and keeping them away from my wife who's working. Um, and I, this is just an all day thing and it's pretty challenging. And uh, by the time like eight, nine o'clock, PM rolled around, I'm just exhausted and I just want to <laughs> pass out. Uh, and as you guys know, I live on the East Coast. Tommy and the rest of the crew live on the West Coast. For me, we don't even start till 10 PM and they start at seven, which is like, they're just getting off of work and stuff. We could have recorded the show probably earlier and stuff, but again, I'm dealing with my kids all day. So, I mean, just to be again, honest and frank, uh, we, I just did not have the time. I just, not, no time, just didn't have the time. Uh, but now, you know, I moved in. My recording situation is the best it's ever been for this show now. And on top of that, Wake County, where I live in North Carolina, they just, not just, it's been a few weeks, but they've implemented online learning. And that takes a lot of pressure off of me and my family this thing has been going on for a month and between everything, it was just, it was insane around here. Some of you know, my, my son's autistic, so that's challenging on its own. So yeah, it, it was hard, but, but now that online learning is happening and my kids are finally like, okay, we get it. Like mom's working and they've got schoolwork to deal with. And it's, you know, it's much more structured and stuff like that. So I feel like, hey, you know, now is a good time to come back. As far as content goes, you know, we'll come up with stuff. We'll, we'll try to come up with something. And I think we're going to have fun coming back. Uh, we're getting somewhat close to the parks reopening. And let's move on to that, shall we? So before I bring Tommy and Chris and Jess on, uh, just so we're not wasting time this evening, because it's going to be, again, it's late for me. So I just want to sort of get this stuff out of the way, sort of what we know now 
on what's going on with the parks. Generally speaking, I release these episodes. Well, I release them usually Sunday evenings, but right now it's Thursday, um, um, May what? The sec. It's the seventh. Sorry, <laughs> it's uh, May the seventh, Thursday, and so I just thought I'd talk about really quickly, sort of what we know. Uh, they just announced today, actually, that Disney Springs over at Walt Disney World is going to start opening in phases uh, on May the 20th. So my understanding is that Disney stores, Disney owned stores will not be reopening, but a lot of these third party stores that are there will be. And they're going to follow all of the, I guess, phase one rules of social distancing meaning a certain number of people at the store at one time, face masks, uh, six uh, feet separation, and, and, and all, those, all those things that's going on pretty much everywhere. Uh, also, we know at, at Disneyland in Anaheim that Disneyland's not going to be accepting any kind of hotel reservations until July 1st. So we know at this point that if they, after July 1st, maybe that's when we're going to start opening or or start seeing openings in the parks at Disneyland. I don't believe we have any word for Walt Disney World. But over in Shanghai, Shanghai Disneyland, they are also going to be reopening in phases starting May 11th. And I wanted to just read off really quickly because this could give a good idea of what it's going to be like here at Disneyland, here in Anaheim and in Florida. Obviously, not all of this will apply, but this is what they're going to be doing in in Shanghai. Uh, so for for employees, they're going to be doing screenings for the employees, and they have to. They're they're basically going to be instituting a health and safety uh, COVID nineteen training for for all the employees. They're going to encourage contactless contactless interactions with visitors. You know, no touching. <laughs> I would hope that was the case anyway. And they're also going to be providing masks and additional protective equipment uh, for the employees. Now, over uh, at the entrance and security checkpoints when you're when you're going into the park, they're going to require advanced reservations for daily visitors and annual pass holders. And I think we're going to be seeing sort of the same thing over at Walt Disney World and Disneyland. I do know that Six Flags recently announced a similar system where you're going to just have to make a ahead of time reservation. Now, it says also that uh, you're going to have to use government issued Shanghai Health QR code contact tracing system. I don't think we're going to see anything like that in the United States, but who knows? Uh, They're going to implement temperature screening. They're going to limit attendance and pulse, you know, the visitor entry, sanitizing all of the entry turnstiles, and they're going to require visitors to wear protective face masks. I I see that working no problem in China. Uh, China, they do that anyway. Like Asian countries tend to do that. They're more polite society, especially Japan. I, any video I've ever seen of Tokyo Disneyland or Shanghai Disneyland People are always walking around wearing masks. That's that's kind of a way of life out there, sort of, sadly. But but they do it out of politeness. They're not trying to protect themselves. They're trying to protect the people around them because they're sick. <laughs> we'll see how... I will, I'm not sure if that will play out here, though. We'll try try making a kid wear a face mask all day. I just I don't see it happening, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, social distancing, right? Sanitation, they're going to control visitor capacity and density. So, for example, they're going to reduce an 80,000 visitor capacity to 24,000 visitors a day. Wow. They're going to increase sanitation and disinfect uh, disinfection measures at high-touch locations. Okay. Install hand sanitizing uh, stations at attractions and entrances and exits. So, in regards to rides and attractions, they're going to manage the capacity in queues and in, on ride vehicles. Uh, they're going to structure the queues to maintain social distancing. They're also going to enforce social distancing on ride vehicles. They're also going to sanitize all of the ride vehicles and handlebars and queue railings and stuff like that. And then they're going to temporarily close theater shows and children's play areas. Now, regarding shows and characters and stuff like that, uh, they're going to suspend parades and nighttime spectaculars. Uh, They're going to offer nightly 
light and music show on the Enchanted Storybook Castle. I guess that's a light show? I don't know what that is. It's in, in, in Shanghai, so I'm not sure. Uh, temporarily halt, close interactions, and close-up photos with costume characters. So <laughs> Your picture with Mickey is going to be six feet away. Well, it says here that they're going to offer daily Mickey and Friends express character per, uh, procession. So I bet you you walk up, snap, walk away. Walk up, snap, walk away. I bet you that's how it's going to go. I remember seeing a video like at Comic-Con or something like that, and it was Mark Hamill, Disney's very own Luke Skywalker, doing meet and greet at Comic-Con. And your interaction with him, you, and I, these, I think these are people who paid like 100 bucks to get a photo. Your, your interaction with Luke Skywalker was about two seconds long. You walk up, you smile, take the picture, you leave. Next, next, it just, it goes on and on. So that's what's going to be happening with Mickey and friends, it seems. Regarding dining, uh, they're going to manage restaurant capacity and then they're going to allow the visitors to remove face masks while you're eating, which makes sense. So that's what they're going to be doing. All that stuff that I just read off, that's what they're going to be doing in Shanghai. So I see a lot of this being moved over to the United States parks. And so that's sort of, the question that I have, and that's why I'm going to bring on Tommy and Jess and Chris right now, because I want to know, like, when Disneyland finally reopens, they're, you know, Tommy and Chris are annual pass holders and they're families. I'm, I'm very curious to see if they're just going to, they're going to go right back, right as it reopens, or if they're going to go, or if they're going to hold off uh, until they feel it's much safer to go. So uh, let me, let me bring them on. And now we present our feature presentation on the Disky Podcast. Welcome to this happy place. Welcome. Disneyland is your land. Here age relives fond memories of the past, and here youth may savor the challenge and promise of the future. Disneyland is dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America, with the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration to all the world. All right, everybody, let's go on to our, uh, our our main topic. Let's bring Tommy, Chris, and Jess on. Hey, guys, what's up? Ooh, what's up? Hey. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back. <laughs> oh, don't don't cough, cough, man. I don't want to catch it even through the microphone. Oh, gosh. Sorry. Listen to him. Sorry. Sorry. That was bad. I apologize. <laughs> Believe me, I get in trouble for stuff like that. So, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't want to hear it. So let's, all right, look, all, I, I just read off to everybody, like all of the Shanghai Disneyland uh, health and safety protocols that they're going to have everything from em- employee screenings to entrance checkpoints and temperature checks, social, so, I can't say that word, social distancing, social. Uh, uh, distancing and, and rides and all that stuff. So you know, all this is going on. This is, of course, it's Shanghai. So, you know, I don't think everything's going to be the same, but it gives a pretty good indication of what they're going to do. We also know that they are going to implement uh, probably some kind of a reservation system. So with all of that in mind, Tommy, as a Disneyland pass holder, when they hit the button and they say, okay, phase one, we're ready to go. We're now accepting reservations. Are you going to hit the button? Are you going to go right back and follow all this stuff? Or do you think you're going to hold off until things are a little bit more manageable? Plus, personally, you know, will you feel safe going out once, you know, 
California hits stage one of their reopening. Well, they start it, stage two on Friday. Oh, I, I guess yeah, stage. Yeah, we're already. Yeah, we're still, Yeah, exactly. Well, they're announcing stage two on Friday. Stage one is is the opening of the music stores, bookstores, and um, what else? Bookstores, music stores, and uh, what? Uh, there's something else. A couple other things. Florist. You know, yeah, so I can go to Tower part. Records. Uh, I can go to Tower <laughs> Records. Go to Amoeba. And Blockbuster Video. Huh? And Blockbuster Video. Blockbuster <laughs> Video. And go to Amoeba. Sa- and Amoeba. <laughs> oh, and. Uh, Amoeba's closed. Oh, and uh, uh, Borders. Yeah, Borders <laughs> Books. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and yeah. Yeah. Oh, and Toy Stores. Toys R Us. Yeah, that's those are the th- things I, I can go to uh, starting tomorrow. So, Toys R Us. Borders bookstores, uh, Tower Records. So yeah, I'm all ready to go nowhere. <laughs> nice. Thanks to the state of California. <laughs> I, when I saw that instantly, when I saw Gavin Newsom, the governor, and make that announcement, I instantly saw that music stores, bookstores, toy stores. I go, Borders Books, Music <laughs> Plus, <laughs> Toys R Us. Hey, that's a good. That's a good way to do it. The warehouse. Really sounds. Yeah. Yeah, the, oh, the, warehouse. Oh, the warehouse. warehouse and Sam Goody. Let's Sam go. Goody. Oh, my gosh. Here Sign we are. Sign me up. Sign me up. I'm yeah. standing at the door screaming, open, open, open. Oh, gosh. Because there's the Mervins right next door. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, you know, it has to do with the uh, just what's going on that day, uh, that time period. We don't know. It's yeah. just uh, there could be we could be having a relapse, um, another spread of this uh, virus. I don't, at that time, it's hard to tell what's going to happen three weeks from now, three months yeah, from now, take three two years or three from now. Three weeks to even find out if we right. did the right thing at the right time. Exactly, and so, so it's very difficult. And you know, I've been home. I've been you know. I haven't gone anywhere. I don't go anywhere. I don't do anything. And, you know, do I feel cooped up? Absolutely, I feel cooped up. But would I like to go to Disneyland? Yeah, I would like to go to Disneyland. Definitely would feel a little bit different and be careful what I touched and that sort of thing and make sure I keep my distance away from people. I don't, I, I don't know. It just, I know it's going to be different. I, you know, you definitely want to go do something because you don't want to uh, just want to stay at home. For the rest you know, of your life. Exactly. You know, <laughs> that's that's one thing. But when they just, when when they do reopen, you know, yeah. it's going to be like you said, it's definitely going to be different. I'm I'm picturing, yeah. especially initially, I'm picturing no fireworks, no character meet yeah. and greets. Well, Shanghai right. is going to have character meet and greets. They're going to be you know, social distancing. <laughs> and yeah, I, and you know what they're going to do is they're going to set them up like six feet behind you, put you right here in front of it. And they're going to give you, a, it's going to give you the, and then take the picture and it's going to give you that angle. Yeah, where it, it, it looks, looks like, like they're there. right beside you. Yeah. But really you're, that's you what know, they're going to have to do. That's, it's just going to have to be that way, you know, it, until there's I, a vaccine yeah, at um, least who knows how long any of this is going to last or treatment or herd immunity. <laughs> well, something this something's is going to have to happen. This is what it says for again. Shanghai. This is what I, I this fascinated me and it reminded me of something. I, I said it earlier in the show, but I'll say it to you guys. One of the things it says here is that they're going to offer daily Mickey and Friends Express character procession. So what does that mean? Does that mean you walk up, gonna, snap and walk off really fast? Or yeah, maybe or maybe it's like they're going to be on a car and they're going to and you're, you're just it's way bad like our rainy day one at the park <laughs> yeah and they get out be sure to have your cameras ready to take your pictures there's a great <laughs> video I, I was telling the audience this earlier that there's a great video of of Mark Hamill doing a meet and greet at Comic Con or something like that and these keep in mind these are people who probably paid $100 to get your picture taken with him right okay. the line was literally your your interaction with Mark Hamill was about 3 seconds long you walked up to him you t- he smiled, you take a picture, and you walk off. No, there's no chatting for a minute or two or nothing like that. It's just like a cattle call. Just keep going. And no going. autograph? No autograph. You, th- that's separate. This this is just, oh, wow. that's a separate thing. The autograph, I'm some some of these Comic-Cons do 
packages, you know. So you get an autograph and you get a and you get a picture. But this was the picture taking portion. And okay. Mark, it was Mark Hamill who put the video up. He like he put he took his phone out, he propped it, and he said, "Here, I'll live stream my meet and greet." And then he propped the camera down where he was, wherever whatever comic, you know, wherever he was. And it was like, and I was just watching that, thinking to myself, I almost paid because I almost paid like, like, like three or four hundred dollars one time, so I can take my picture with uh, Mulder and Scully, both of them together. I thought, oh, how wow. amazing would that be? But I ultimately didn't do it because I saw the Mark Hamill thing. And I'm like, my interaction with them will be about five seconds long for us to pose and then move on. And I won't really get a chance to talk or or anything. Plus, it's a lot of money, that too. (laughs) But I'm a huge X-Files fan and I thought that would have been awesome. So I'm sure for the people who, who have that picture, the picture is more awesome than the moment itself because you go through really quick. And I know at Disneyland right. for especially for children and stuff and adults as well, being able to take your picture with Mickey, that's just like that's just one of the things you do. That's one of the top things you do. People stand in line for hours for that. And that and just to have it be click, all right, move on, click, move on, click. That's sad. You know what I mean? And that's why I'm thinking yeah, to my I guess interaction with, with the actual characters is what actually makes meeting the character worth standing in that line. Yeah. Yeah. And, you, and you get a moment just with standing them, there you know? taking a picture six feet away and it just looks like you're next to him mickey gives you a hug he, he waves yeah. to the little kid and messes with him for a little while and stuff and it's 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 a cool moment and i hate messes for, with him huh start to <laughs> i hate for something like that to be taken away and no fireworks and no shows and it and all this weird stuff with the rides like to me like is it even worth going for me i don't know it's assuming that the price for the ticket is going to be the same Right? Maybe even more money. Who knows? They they might test the waters with that. But I, maybe they should do it like the it's gonna be the sixty fifth anniversary of uh, birthday of Disneyland, July seventeenth. Maybe they should do it like a sixty five dollar special. <laughs> <laughs> Universal's announcing and you'll be like there a, for a 25- sixty five and you'll be and you'll be allowed to be in the park for sixty five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Universal Universal's suggesting a twenty five percent price decrease in their ticket price. In their new survey today, I heard about do that. that anyway. Yeah, <laughs> tickets are too. But that, that's what I was talking. I was actually talking to my wife about this. I was like, "Do you think they would actually, like, say, let's say, give a twenty percent discount off the tickets to get people back in, like, kind I think of like have to. T- temporarily?" No, I think there's enough people that want to co- show up and be there anyway. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know Disney, and you know how how freaking crazy we all are. Yeah. Yeah, there's enough. Think... There's enough annual pass holders to keep that park alive until this this weird stuff is over with. I think they did a great job by you know launching the flex flex program, flex yeah. pass program because um, they were the ones to really get it working and up and running, and so now they could use that that type of uh, pass for annual pass holders. I think but they're going to put the a type of. That's not the type of pass I bought, and right now I understand there. that. But there might be you might have to use that type of pass for right now during this time until right. we come back to some more. Uh, our, you know, we're we're out of the pandemic stage of I'm our. I'm gonna say uh, here. you do you do realize they're gonna be changing potentially all of our passes into a flex pass, and some of us uh, paid a lot more for our passes than the people that paid for their. Well, yeah, flex well, pass. I, I I bought a signature pass, and yeah, exactly, I know. Does it so say in plus. tiny little letters like they reserve the right to to yeah, they change can make it the change and the all pass. that stuff? Yeah. <laughs> sure. I don't know, man. Well, I'd I- hope they would extend it, um, you know, for the people that bought a more expensive pass. Maybe just extend extended. it out. Like yeah, they are extended but, out but just another year pass. or something it, yeah. instead of. Oh. I, I don't think they'll extend it a year, but I mean they should. I mean it depends on how drastic. You know, all this is going to be. Yeah, they they really probably should consider that because at this point, like expecting everyone to just kind of deal with it <laughs> is uh, it's, <laughs> it's going to be a bit little much tough. to ask for. Probably it's a, on a it's lot a bit of much people. to ask for. Yeah, yeah, because we've know, all just already had to just deal with it. This year has just been this year has just been full of deal with it. <laughs> yeah, so. You know, I'm sure annual pass holders are not going to be ready and willing to just deal with it, whatever the changes are. I, 
I think we, we talked about it a little bit hard. on a, a uh, little bit about this, you know, the deal, how we would deal with it on the Ear Avengers. And I think one of the things that came up was um, would we go to the parks and we would, you know, wearing these masks and all the social distancing thing. Would that to- that would that change our experience? Would we, would we want to still go to the parks because of that? Don't or do we just want to go to the parks just to get away from all that? You know. Yeah, uh, but there's no way unless you can like I mean, absolutely know for sure that you're not infected. You can't get around those those yeah. safety guidelines. Well, uh, it's just like yeah. Uh, I mean, that's I, I guess I guess I guess you escape all yeah. of the crap of your real life, and then yeah, that's the you thing. Know, is, uh, this you is with everyone having to wear masks everywhere. You're not going to ever escape that. This You're constantly important. reminded about it because you have a damn mask. Yeah, on your well, face, yeah so. see, I think the, the, the deal with the, it. <laughs> <laughs> but you yeah. know what? There's people out there, though, who won't follow the rules. You know, there, there's no, people. No, they'll be kicked out. Yeah. They're going to have to. I'm t- I they went to, to Karis, okay, this is Walmart. All right. So let's start there. But I went to Walmart. I, my wife and I, we both went to Walmart because I was just like, I got to yeah. get out of here. So we went, we went to Walmart. You know, they had a, there wasn't a line of people to get in. But they had a worker standing outside with like an iPad and they were paying attention to how many people were in the store at one time. Mm-hmm. And there's a sign on the side that they said they asked that everyone wear face masks. Okay, so I went in and I would say about 95 of the people were not wearing face masks. I, I was. My wife was. Oh. But how long ago was this? A week ago. Like, like. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I thought maybe it was when it first started. No, no, no. This is like, like. Um, Monday or something. So they're not taking it seriously where you live. Yeah. Now where (laughs) I live in a small town, I live in, I live in Wake County. I live in Raleigh. This small town that I live in, Holly Springs, we've only had 14 like confirmed cases, no deaths. Um, but I can tell you now we moved my old house. We were at the end of a cul-de-sac and now we're sort of like, we're in the middle, you know, you know, like in the neighborhood houses. And yeah. so we have neighbors on the right and the left and the people on the left, they're super nice people, but it seems like every Friday they go out into the front yard, they have a fire pit and they hang out there all night. And there's like a big group of them. And I'm like, first of all, they're noisy. Second of all, they didn't invite me. <laughs> uh, third, but it's, it's neighbors. They're, they're hanging out with neighbors. And I was just thinking to myself, like, we're supposed to be like, we're not supposed to be doing that. Oh, I live in a cul-de-sac and my neighbors have ha- been having freaking cul-de-sac block parties with each other like every weekend for the last three weeks and all the kids are running around playing with each other and I'm like me and my immediate neighbor we are not taking part in it we're like they're being stupid they're all gonna get sick I don't know what's going on we I mean we even had our neighbor kids knock on our door one day and ask if we want to partake in a raffle yeah and I was like Go Chris away. answered the door and didn't say anything. I'm like, you should have told him, like, um, excuse you guys, but you need to be in your house. <laughs> like, yeah, I would have said we, we live him. very close to a cul-de-sac, <laughs> and there's kids out there, and there. I heard that that the person who's at the end of the cul-de-sac over here, uh, like, has block parties all the time. Like, and they said, oh, you'll get invited. Trust us. Like, and like, we live on this is like my wife purposely wanted to live on this street. It's the Halloween street. Um, this oh. this street is just <laughs> cool. jamming. Uh, uh, on Halloween. So my wife is so excited for that. It's one of the Not main reasons year. we wanted to live on this street. But anyway, but I just, yeah, I, it was just an ob- observation I had, like it was Sunday or Monday. And I just, and I was just thinking, no one's really wearing the face masks, you know, the workers were, uh, but people weren't. And, and I was thinking the same thing at Disneyland, even like if they do temperature checks, you could just take some aspirin and, and, and you're right. done, you're, you're yeah. fine. And you don't have that temperature anymore. If you're sick, like people want to go to Disneyland, they want to go on their vacations, and yeah. you know people are selfish and stuff like that. So oh, yeah. I see can that you imagine, too. Can you imagine like going through Mickey and Friends and all that stuff, and you get down to the security place? You know, it takes it takes at least 35, 45, 45 minutes just to park and get to just get security. to the security gate, and then you do the health check, and your kid has a a fever one degree over, and you, you know, and you're out. Back. You're, you're everyone's your out <laughs> exactly everything everything's out everyone happy no, birthday we, kid get out <laughs> now it'll, you know? it'll be interesting like now again you're gonna they're gonna ask for advanced like reservations minutes, right and then you have to take another test <laughs> yep yeah that's what i was saying like maybe as part of the reservation system they're gonna say as part of the 
for like you have to be tested or something. So at Shanghai, uh, one of the bullet points here is that you have to have a government. Now this is different. It's Shanghai, okay? It's China. It's different, but you have oh, to yeah. have a government issued Shanghai Health QR code uh, contact tracing system. Wow. So cool. So you'll oh, be tested. Sorry. They'll give you a code. Really taking off. <laughs> They'll give you a code. <laughs> And that way, that way they can just click. Okay, you're good. Like without that, you can't get in. Wow. And there, it says it changes like every five we're minutes. We're in 1994. 1984. 84, yeah. yeah. Now, Sorry. true. It, Chris just it's said like something. Like 1994. Don't you remember? Yeah, 1994. Unwrapped, and then all of a sudden they had a number attached to. You. No. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, you know, China is different. They're a different society, a different culture. So I, I know, obviously, that's. Not probably gonna, not gonna fly here, but you know that could well, speed sure things up. The Disney company is gonna use, um, you know, all this information that they're they're gathering in Shanghai as protocol and guinea pig for whatever they might be doing here. They're gonna know what works and what doesn't, and they're gonna have to come up with solutions for what doesn't work. You know, it's been like I've been thinking about a lot too. How you know they spend so much money uh, just getting this Galaxy's Edge going. And they finally got it going. It had kind of a rough start, you know. And but but that rise of the resistance, it got it that ride of the resist, you know, the rise of the resistance, man. Imagine like, how is Millennium Falcon going to work now? Like, if they're going to social distance, I mean, the ship's going to crash. There's not going to be no one on the rights. No one's going to be able to steer the ship properly. There's auto. There's autopilot. <laughs> You're like going up. Okay, right. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going in a straight line. <laughs> They'll just like have that's the. A, that's a good. That's a. That's a really good question. Maybe you'll you know, get what you always wanted, Daniel, and Millennium Falcon will just turn into a regular ride. We don't yeah, have to touch buttons. No buttons. No nothing. You won't. You what? You no one. No one wants to touch the buttons. You know. <laughs> they have to I wipe know, them down after down every flight. Like, I don't want to touch anything. Can we do automatic pilot on this? <laughs> <laughs> They'll have to add a, a voiceover of Hondo going, "Okay, good mission. Now here comes the cleaning crew." <laughs> <laughs> Clean up your mess. <laughs> Don't want little buggies on the control panel. <laughs> I saw you licking the buttons. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Ew. It's not that we know someone who did that or anything. <laughs> Seriously. He didn't lick the buttons. I, I know, I'm just have messing one around. Friend that it was, does that it was kind of crap. <laughs> Okay, but anyway. <laughs> so yeah, man. One guy. <laughs> I don't know about this, guys. I, I, I this, this is all so weird. Like, I don't know. Like, if, the, if the whole Disneyland experience is gonna be, you know, again, I, I'm, I'm optimistic that this is all of this is temporary. You know, but yeah, oh, but, yeah, yeah, it is. It's a whole new world, and it will be for a while until think, things think, get normal again. Yeah. And basically, a, until a vaccine is created and actually able to distribute. And that's, that's how long we're we going to have to one. deal with all of this stuff. That's assuming we get a vaccine. Let's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, I, I, if I'm honest with myself, like a part of me is like, I probably, if, if my wife said, okay, let's go in October. My, my birthday's in October. I explored yeah. the idea of going to Walt Disney World on my birthday. But if it's going to still be like a lot of this going on, like, I don't know. Part of me is just like, I don't know if I want to, if I don't get the full experience. Another part of me is though, I really, I love Disney. I want to go. I miss it so much, you know? And, and so it, I don't know. It's, it's, it's hard. This is hard. That That's the thing. It's like, you don't have, get for you. It's a, you have the expectation of going the distance yeah the the money it takes to go there all that stuff it's a little bit it's different now than it was before um it's so you know you have these memories of how it was and what it was like and now there's all these new restrictions you're kind of like am i far enough away from a person are they gonna you know somebody's gonna have some meltdown because that's my, my I, issue that's that's exactly what my oh, hold on. Is. I have I trust myself to like not lick handles and <laughs> not rub my hands all over someone's face 
But I don't trust <laughs> these weirdos that live around me. Like, I have to walk my dog every morning, and I can't tell you. Like, I walk away from people, and, like, you know, there's always joggers on the sidewalk. And these people, like, run into the grass to run into me without their mask on. <laughs> like, I don't trust these weirdos. Send your dog after him, man. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so it, it, there's, you know, I talked to my wife and I said, well, maybe we just, just go to Hawaii, go to the beach, you know. <laughs> exactly. Get away. You know what I mean? And so you, you, you're far enough away from everyone and everybody. But on a six-hour plane flight with all that circulated air for an airborne disease, great idea. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. I can't take a cruise ship. I don't know cruise ship. Yeah, cruise ships drive. aren't going to reopen for a long time. Uh yeah, you, uh, didn't maybe, one of them just uh, well, announce uh, something? Actually, didn't August first is when Norwegian uh, Cruise Line just opened. We start doing yeah. uh, re restarting cruising. So, but we'll see. Again, we'll see. What but happens. is anyone going to go? I mean, oh yeah, just there. You know I what? Have just, 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 just like what? just like I'm people terrified. love Disney. They love. There's a lot of people that love cruising. The same kind of passion. Huh? Yeah, there are. I've, I've never been on cruise. I have no clue. Yeah. Oh yeah. I have a cruise scheduled for September, and I'm terrified. I don't know. Oh, good. I'll cancel it. I don't want to pay for it anyway. <laughs> what do you mean pay for it? Don't you have a hookup? Reschedule it. <laughs> um, yeah, cruises are weird, because like, for, especially for me, because like, the, I, I was talking to my wife about this. Like, I, I've only been on a handful of cruises, and two, like three of the cruises, either I've gotten sick or my wife has gotten sick or like my daughter got sick on one of them. And then my wife and I went on a cruise just by ourselves and we didn't get sick, but the boat crashed into the dock. <laughs> so I, <laughs> so I have not had an, Oh, this is the best part about the, the when the, the, the cruise that crashed into the dock, we, um, that day that we were stuck in port that day, we had our, like our scheduled, like a VIP tour of the boat where they take you um, like into the kitchen and then the quarters and all that stuff. And they took us onto the bridge. We met the captain and we were talking. And of course the, to the topic was, Hey, the, the cruise ship crashed into the dock. Like what happened? And you know, he, and he was limping around cause he injured himself trying to look at the damage. He fell down some hole or something like that. So this guy was a mess. <laughs> this guy was a mess. And he was just like, I think he was way more candid than like he normally would have been. <laughs> And he kind of goes, he saw, I'll never forget this as long as I live. He sighed because somebody asked him about something about the crash. And the reason yeah. the boat crashed is because it was the momentum and, and extremely, extremely tight quarters uh, for these giant cruise ships to maneuver. So it was kind of just a rough, you know, it wasn't a serious crash or anything. Like it was, they were repairing it and we were on our way a day later, but we did miss one um, stop yeah. uh, because of it. But it really wasn't that big of a deal. But he was just like, he was all shook up and stuff. And he was just like, he goes, he sighs. He goes, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time before one of these things goes down. They're too goddamn big. That's what the captain <laughs> said. <laughs> oh, my God. So, so this is carnival. <laughs> and, 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 and so, like, after that cruise, I said to my wife, I don't know how I feel about cruising anymore. You know, and then, and, but I was just recently like talking about, have good luck on we don't, we, either. we have not, but, but I was talking to my wife just like a couple of days ago about this. And I said, I don't know about cruises. I mean, especially now. And she said, dude, if I said on like Christmas or something, let's go on a cruise, you're going to say no. And I was just like, yeah, I wouldn't say I'd go. <laughs> Cause <laughs> at the end of the day, despite, despite all of that, um, we had a blast. Like they're totally fun and the food's good and and all that stuff cruises are awesome but it's there's just this one like tiny little stigma that's attached to it you know because that little part of you you know there's this remembers a, when you crash into the dock <laughs> <laughs> that same boat i think tommy you might remember it was i forgot what year it was but it was the same boat it was a uh, one of the mexican riviera cruises off of uh from carnival it may okay. i don't think it was the split it, they eventually that boat Splendor, ended. Splendor, imagination, um, inspiration. I think it was the Splendor. And they ended yeah. up leaving and they went like on the East Coast. I don't know if they've come back since. But there was yeah, a. Yeah, they they're actually, it, it's actually been referred. It's now in Australia. Yeah. That yeah. Splendor, mm -hmm. 
I think like I would say maybe three or four months after our cruise, that mm-hmm. same splendor, that same ship, that same captain, that same itinerary, that boat caught on fire. It had a, like an electrical fire. Oh, yep. My. And yeah, and it was yeah. like kind of stranded and it smelled like poop and they had to kind of like rescue. Oh, that's the one. Rescue no, people. No, that's not the, no, that was the Triumph. You're thinking in the one in Galveston. No, no, no. This was Galveston. a Mexican Riviera one. Okay. okay. I remember right. because I we were on that same boat, whatever the boat yeah. was called. I don't remember yeah, the name Splendor. exactly. Probably Splendor. <laughs> and I was, and I said to Lori, "Can you imagine that poor captain like right now, just like going, oh, now he's dealing with that." Yeah, and I remember, like, never ever go on a cruise. I remember the guy, the um. The Let cruise director, the cruise director was doing like blog posts and stuff and cheering everybody up and saying, hey, we're awesome still. And it was the same guy. And I, I was just I felt bad for all the people. But and I think they ended up getting rescued. Cruises are crazy, man, but they are tons of fun. You we're, know, the thing is, is with, with the cruise, I mean, unless there's some kind of I mean, nowadays with, you know, technology they can avoid a lot of the problems that they were having before for example like getting into bad weather and things like that and and you know and all that technology for example like your bathrooms they're all operated they're not like your your home toilet where it's like the plumbing's done by you know the pressure or the uh, you know um you know water pressure and things like that the uh, just gravity you know they have to use like the, the electrical, you know. They have to use special toilets. Yeah, yeah, expect, yeah, exactly. So I mean, so you know, that's the way it works, you know. So if there's an electrical outage or a problem, uh, electrical wise, you know, that can you know affect the, the, you know, the toilet system. It doesn't really happen a lot, but you know, it happens. Some sometimes it happens, you know, that sort of thing. So you know, but if you, you ever know, wanted to know about plumbing issues on cruise ships, my dad's the guy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> there was a great but, picture today but, uh, on social media you know, of all three Disney cruises. You don't know. You, you probably don't know about the Carnival Splendor. Do you know what its sister ship is? Ah, oh, I did know, and I don't remember, but I did know okay. this. It's the Costa Concordia. Yes. <laughs> yes. And if you and if you if you know about that story, is where it's 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 the uh, the YouTube ship at, it. Um, <laughs> Huh? I said the, YouTube the, it. Uh, the cap, the cap, yeah, the captain that decided to he bailed to impress his, his girlfriend uh, by <laughs> oh, getting close to land, land, and he hit the rocks. Yep, and he sank the ship. Yep. <laughs> the one in the yeah. Mediterranean or something. Yep. That? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the sister ship to the to the uh, Carnival Splendor. Oh, but, yeah. That's that was supposed to be the second Costa ship. There's only like a, a handful ship. of them, and right? You know, Carnival Carnival Corporation owns Costa Cruises, by the way. There's only Carnival a handful of that class, right? Because I remember that was had sort of a big deal when we were right. on it. Like they it were was, saying, like it, is, yeah, it was a newer only, one. I think there's only two. Yeah. Well, and that it was the that one, the Concordia and the Splendor. And that was it, I believe. Hey, you yeah, guys want to talk about Disneyland? No, we're talking about cruising right now. Yeah, this is the special Cruise Welcome Dudes the cruise edition dudes of the Diz Geek Podcast. <laughs> Sneak peek at the Cruise Dudes Podcast. Yeah, you could just, yeah, yeah. This is actually the free episode of the Cruise Dudes Podcast. You Bonus know. episode. Yeah, we'll put this one on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway. But back to Disney. So I think really, it, you know, it's kind of interesting that Disney, uh, every all of us want to go back to Disneyland. And, and Walt Disney World and have a Disney experience and you know there's a lot of people who want to go back on the Disney cruises and stuff like that but I think there it's a, a there's a lot of unknowns and I think uh, in the next couple of weeks we're going to see what happens with you know Shanghai and how it all, everyone's going to be looking at that Disney's going to be looking at that closely you know there's, there's going to be a limited amount of uh, guests that they're going to allow into the parks can they make a profit doing it that way we don't know we're going to have to see um, I know a lot of investors are looking at it very carefully. Uh, <laughs> Disney looks very vulnerable right now, you know, yeah. because yeah, of because of uh, you know they have a big tra- they're a big travel and entertainment market, and both of those that's seventy five percent of their business. Yeah, really, it really is. It's a huge amount of, about their business, 
you know uh we just got the first quarter report or excuse me second quarter report um that it was only made last 10 percent of revenue yeah, but that, that was because the last two weeks, that's where they closed. The the quarter ended at the last two weeks. But that was a half a billion uh, half a billion dollars that, that was lost in two weeks. Isn't there rumors uh, as well of Mac, uh, or Apple, I'm but, sorry, looking to, to take over? I mean, I know that's that, sort of a rumor, and that it's probably that, not. That's true. been around for years. Yeah. Like, but now, it, but like it, now it, they're it, in a position to actually do it. <laughs> well, what? Why would I don't know why, why Apple would, would want Apple to? I just know that that's over to, they have no they have no they have no capabilities. That's not that's not even in their wheelhouse. Not even close to their wheelhouse. It, it makes no sense. They would have to have a separate. They would have they couldn't. Their their current board of directors could not absorb Disney's board of directors. Sure, that doesn't make sense. Just throwing I it mean, out there because I know it's a rumor. I know it, it just doesn't. I, I mean, it, unless it's just going to be, you know. Apple, you know, the Apple Corporation, you know, that, right. You know, it had to, it had to make it. Does, I don't see how it was going to work, <laughs> but, uh, I just feel like we're just going to have to watch what happens. I, I would hate to I use the words should... unpre- unprecedented, you know, you know, it's just uncharted territories. All everyone's saying all this stuff. But it really is uncharted, and it's really because we're, we've never, none of us have lived through something like what we've lived through the last uh, six weeks of our lives, and we don't know what our jobs are going to look like. We don't know what our businesses are going to look like. We don't know what education, how education is going to be uh, um done in in the in the next six months to a year are universities going to reopen are you know are the schools going to reopen uh what's travel going to be like on an airplane what's travel going to be like on a on a train what's travel going to be like on a cruise ship we don't know all this there's just a lot of unknowns and all we do know is it's going to affect a lot of people's lives and a lot of people's livelihoods yeah yeah and you know, I'm you know, I'm concerned about our friends and that have travel businesses. I'm concerned about our friends that work in the theme park industry and yeah. you know, and um, the people who uh, uh, you know from the cast members that uh, work operate the rides to the people that design the rides and Imagineering. All these people that uh, have crossed our paths, you know, uh, people who worked at a, you know at the Disney archives who worked at. You know, worked in animation department. And all the people that, you know, that we've run across to in our lives. You know, the, what's their livelihood going to look like? What's their lives? You know, and um, it's a it's a it's a different. It's going to be different. All I all I know it's going to be different, and we're just going to take it one day at a time. All I know is I just can't wait for it to be over. And what I really can't wait for to be finally over. Are all these uh, COVID nineteen commercials uh, that are yeah. that are on TV? They're literally all the same, and it, it's it's that's driving me crazier. Yeah, that's driving <laughs> me crazier than anything. <laughs> are all I these... think I know a way Disney can make a whole lot of money on everything right now. What they should, um, they should uh, really enforce their trademark of. We are all in this together. Uh, and <laughs> so many people that have used it without Every their permission. Every time I hear someone say it, I hear the song. Me too. And that they have used this. And then this I can't get it out of my head. <laughs> Disney's permission, and they should sue everyone for millions and millions of dollars. And this will help their we bottom. Own the phrase. Yeah, they own the phrase. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Don't you think? I agree. Genius. It sounds like something Disney would do anyway. (laughs) It sounds like something they would take advantage of anyway. (laughs) They're just waiting for the right moment. That's our our phrase. We own that phrase. (laughs) Once once Bob Iger, peace out, you know, JPEG will be like, get the lawyers. Uh, you know, it's really kind of <laughs> release the hounds. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's just uh, yeah. 
I, I don't know. Everyone said, oh, it's it's the new normal. It's this. Oh. It, 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 okay. Hell no. no. I ain't going to let this be my new normal. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Younger I, generations living who are listening to this right now, I'm sure you all are. You'll never know the torture that was uh, s- social distancing and the internet and television and how it just just it was this it was worse than the freaking disease i'm telling you it it's just awful i even hate the term social distancing like i've hated it since day one i don't want to hear it anymore oh my god <laughs> stay safe hashtag. <laughs> hashtag stay safe all right man i don't know if i have anything okay. else to add to this <laughs> uh, yeah well uh, so, all right, before we wrap it up, is there anything else anybody wants to say about this? Like, you know, these are hard times and we joke around and we're having fun, but this is a serious issue and I hope everybody you know, stays yeah, I safe. Do, I do have something to say, you know, it's effect, you know, this disease is real. We we're kind of laughing about the, all the different things that we've, you know, like Disneyland and all this stuff like that, but this is a real disease. It, it's affect affected people that we know uh, I've, I have a, f- a close friend that um, uh, what ha- that has the virus and she's mm-hmm. you know not 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 having uh, you know it's, it's been difficult for her she's lost her, the sense of taste sense of smell um, and uh, she's had headaches and things like that um, and she's had a mild case I had a, uh, my wife's had as a, has an acquaintance that has been in the hospital for over 30 days and was in intensive care, incubated, coma, uh, you know, induced coma. She's okay now. And she's okay now. But, I mean, she went through hell. Yeah. You know, she went through hell. So, um, I, 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 we have friends that are being affected by the, by the disease, and we, we care about them, and we care, we care for their health. We pray that they're, they'll be okay, and, um, and you know, it's, I know that many people have lost people, they've lost friends and family and stuff like that. And, um, our condolences go out to them and, you know, we're, we are concerned for you and your families. And, um, we do hope that there are brighter days for you and that, uh, um, people are, that know that people are uh, caring, care for you and, uh, have empathy for you. Um, just want you guys to know that, that, you know, we don't see this as a joke. This is a, Absolutely. it's a true, this is a true problem that we have right now. And, uh, and there are real people that are passing away every day, you know, and, uh, it's, a, it's real serious. People are losing mothers, fathers, parents, grandparents. It's, t- it's tough. And, uh, and so we know that and, uh, but we hope that we do find a vaccine. We do hope that there, uh, there's healing for people and people are, are finding health again and re- recovering. And we are grateful for all the doctors and the nurses and all the healthcare workers and, and people who have, uh, you know, taken care of people, you know, it's tough. And, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, a, I it, think that's the, that's the thing about it. And I know, that's my sentiment. I know, I, I know, you know, as we laugh all here together, I know it's all of our sentiment as well. Because I know these people, these are my friends, my my son, Daniel, Jess. This is part of that. The, that's their heart, too. I know that. I mean, yeah. I mean, one of the reasons, I mean, I didn't say this earlier, but one of the reasons I didn't really, a part of me that didn't want to record is, is this isn't a laughing matter. And, and my personality is I kind of like to, like, joke around and stuff, you know, and it's, Sometimes it's it's hard to joke around when, you know, this is going on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a coping mechanism, and I yeah. fall into that category. Absolutely, so I always make jokes. I think when we all do. And that's bad is happening us, to me, and yeah. So I think we all do. That's what makes this so dangerous for us to all be in one place. <laughs> right. That's Keep why we make distance. such a great team, guys. <laughs> we all have the same personality. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, oh yeah, I'm going to end it at that. That That's that's well said, Tommy. I couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I couldn't. That's, tr- that's a true statement. Um, thank you for saying that. Everyone, we love you all. We hope you all stay safe. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.
Thank you for listening to the Diz Geek Podcast. Show notes for this episode is at dizgeek.com slash 161. You could follow us on Facebook and over at Instagram and Twitter, we are at Diz Geek Podcast. On regular email, you could reach out to us at disgeekpodcast at gmail.com. If you like what we do and like to support us, please consider donating over at Patreon. It's thanks to the Patreon members that we have now that the show's bills get paid. That's patreon.com slash disgeek. Also, consider leaving us a review on iTunes. And finally, for all things disgeek, head on over to disgeek.com. We have all kinds of information on Disneyland, disgeek merch, books on Amazon about Disney history, and more. Once again, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.